And when he got near it, they blew the mine up and the snipers came out and they shot, shot our medics and there was blood and guts everywhere for hours. And he died. It was really a very depressing thing. I said, let me, let me carry his, his body back. I'd like to do that because, you know, I, I really liked him. He was a nice guy, he helped me out. So where's the body bag? I'll just carry his body back. It's, it's like a half a mile. The guy said, don't you? He says, you don't understand. He says, you don't know what a human body is like. When a body is dead, it sags, and one person cannot carry a human body for one mile. So we need six people to do this. And we all grabbed one part of the body bag and carried him out. So uh, that was uh, that was depressing. And I, th you know, I think that was probably the first time I'd seen a dead person. A great work of architecture is a great work of architecture. Like the pyramids of Egypt, it's like the Eiffel Tower, Arc of Triumph, uh, the St. Louis Arch. A great piece of architecture will draw people to see it. And the difference between this and the Eiffel Tower is the Eiffel Tower, you want to get back and just enjoy this thing in front of you, you know, and look up. But this is different. You want to get close to it, you want to touch it, you want to feel it, put your hand on it, touch the name, see your own reflection in there. It became a very iconic. People began to associate the memorial with healing, a place where people lower their voices in a non-theological way. It's a place where really people are in touch with something spiritual. I decided in 1979 that uh, this would happen, and with the help of a, a lot of really smart people who became part of this team, we were able to accomplish that. I had had the idea when I was in graduate school. My wife and I went to see the movie The Deer Hunter in 1979. I just decided that I was going to build a national memorial in Washington, D.C., and I had to do this. I was going to do this, and nothing was going to stop me from doing this. And, and uh, this is the 30th anniversary of the wall. Uh, amazing how time goes, and of course, it's important that veterans tell, tell their stories and for a lot of the people who served in the Vietnam War, it was very traumatic. When we came back, I, I remember one guy said to me, so you, you, came, you went to Vietnam, what did you learn in, in church growing up? Thou shalt not kill. What did you learn in school? You go to Vietnam and kill, and kill people, take their lives? Anybody can make any judgments they want over the Vietnam War. It happened and uh, Three million of us ended up over there. Nine million Americans ended up in the military. This is part of the Cold War. Didn't turn out particularly well. Not the way the nation had hoped it would, but uh, everybody who went there made a tremendous sacrifice of their time, their talent, uh, their psyche. And I see these people coming back today from Iraq, from Afghanistan. And you can see the way these people are hurt. I'm the guy who started the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. I got it built, and now it's built, and we're commemorating the 30th anniversary. And we have 2,000 volunteers in Washington, D.C. right now, getting ready to Richard already K. have Wells. red names at the wall. It's just magnificent to have such a great group of, of volunteers. My thinking was that this would become a fraternal monument sort of for the actual participants in the war, and they'd come on Veterans Day. But in fact, uh, just the opposite happened. While the veterans come, I mean, 99% of the people who come to the wall on most days are 15, 16-year-old kids. They're not Vietnam veterans. It developed a personality and characteristics of its own. It began to change the way Americans mourn publicly. It began to change it in a very significant way because people began leaving items at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Now over 400,000 items. All of a sudden, people were given a license to mourn publicly. It changed other things too. We started seeing what I call the, the highway headstone. When you're driving down the road and you see the little cross or something for somebody who was killed, that coincided with the dedication of the memorial. People began commemorating these people by leaving teddy bears, things that belonged to them, pictures of them. So it changed the way 
America mourned. So that was not expected. This used to be the wall that heals, but this has really become the wall that educates. And what was missing was a place to educate people, so that's why we're building the Education Center. On the 28th of November, we're going to have a, a, a groundbreaking for the Education Center at the wall. We still need a few million bucks uh, to get it done, and, uh, but we'll, we'll get the money. This is not a, some sort of a jingoistic recruiting center for the army or something. Neither is it some anti-war facility. This is a place to pay honor to the service of our nation's military veterans. Starting in 1775, when the first people uh, stood up and decided that we would become an independent nation. All the way through to today, in Afghanistan, there's some Marine is sitting there getting shot at and hurt and carrying his buddies to some helicopter. This sort of service needs to be remembered by the society and this is where it's going to be done. There's been a lot of resistance. It's been political resistance, all related to the, the preserving the mall, don't interfere with America's mall. It, while it only took three years to get the Vietnam Veterans Memorial built, more than three years just to get the bill through to pass, to get the education center built. And uh, in order to, to get this bill passed, a senator, a couple of them actually, said we're going to put in the bill that they cannot take any federal money and private donors cannot be acknowledged. So we'll make it really, really difficult for this guy to raise money. Once we got the bill through, we spent over a year fighting with uh, some very recalcitrant federal agencies and bureaucrats who said the legislation says at or near the memorial, but at or near the memorial can mean 8, 10, 12 miles away. It doesn't have to be on the mall. Let's put it way somewhere else. Let's put it in some building on the other side of town. So the, these sort of debates just ate up time, money, and uh, this has been very difficult. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. He served in combat. He paid his dues. He was devoted to our country. He is an absolute, superb patriot, unswerving in his devotion to making every place he goes and every place he's been better because he's been there. He understands completely that a different world would not be made by any different people. Jan Scruggs is really and truly a national treasure. It is my high honor to introduce you the president and founder of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund and a great friend, Jan Scruggs. And we should have a fewer of them. I mean, after all, this is the 21st century, and there are other ways of resolving disputes other than shooting each other with, with firearms and bombs and so forth. So I'm hoping that uh, we can live in a better world uh, one day. But it really doesn't look like that's the case, does it?